Learning Objectives At the end of this topic, you will be able to Explain production of sound Cite propagation of sound Describe reflection of sound Cite range of hearing List the applications of ultrasound Explain the structure of the human ear Introduction Shiba was going to school along with her friend Sheila. Every day we hear sounds from various sources like humans, birds, bells, machines, vehicles, televisions, radios, etc. Sound is a form of energy which produces a sensation of hearing in our ears. I have read that there are also other forms of energy like mechanical energy, heat energy, light energy, etc. Right. We've been taught about conservation of energy which states that when we can neither create nor destroy energy, we can just change it from one form to another. In this chapter, we are going to learn how sound is produced and how it is transmitted through a medium and received by our ear. Production of Sound Let's conduct small activities and make some observations. Take a tuning fork and set it vibrating by striking its prong on a rubber pad. Bring it near your ear. Suspend a table tennis ball or a small plastic ball by a thread from a support. Touch the ball gently with the prong of a vibrating tuning fork. Fill water in a beaker or a glass up to the brim. Gently touch the water surface with one of the prongs of the vibrating tuning fork. Next, dip the prongs of the vibrating tuning fork in water. In the above activities, we produce sound by striking the tuning fork. We can also produce sound by plucking, scratching, rubbing, blowing or shaking different objects. We set the objects vibrating and produce sound. Vibration means a kind of rapid to and fro motion of an object. The sound of the human voice is produced due to the vibrations in the vocal cords. When a bird flaps its wings, we can hear some sound. Propagation of Sound Sound is produced by vibrating objects. The matter or substance through which sound is transmitted is called a medium. It can be solid, liquid or gas. Sound moves through a medium from the point of generation to the listener. When an object vibrates, it sets the particles of the medium around it vibrating. The particles do not travel all the way from the vibrating object to the ear. A particle of the medium in contact with the vibrating object is first displaced from its equilibrium position. It then exerts a force on the adjacent particle, as a result of which the adjacent particle gets displaced from its position of rest. After displacing the adjacent particle, the first particle comes back to its original position. This process continues in the medium till the sound reaches your ear. The disturbance created by a source of sound in the medium travels through the medium and not the particles of the medium. A wave is a disturbance that moves through a medium when the particles of the medium set neighboring particles into motion. They in turn produce similar motion in others. The particles of the medium do not move forward themselves, but the disturbance is carried forward. This is what happens during propagation of sound in a medium. Hence, sound can be visualized as a wave. Sound waves are characterized by the motion of particles in the medium and are called mechanical waves. Air is the most common medium through which sound travels. When a vibrating object moves forward, it pushes and compresses the air in front of it, creating a region of high pressure. This region is called a compression C. This compression starts to move away from the vibrating object. When the vibrating object moves backwards, it creates a region of low pressure called rarefaction. As the object moves back and forth rapidly, a series of compressions and rarefactions is created in the air. These make the sound wave that propagates through the medium. Compression is the region of high pressure and rarefaction is the region of low pressure. Pressure is related to the number of particles of a medium in a given volume. More density of particles in the medium gives more pressure and vice versa. Thus, propagation of sound can be visualized as a propagation of density variations or pressure variations in the medium. Sound needs a medium to travel. 
Sound is a mechanical wave and needs a material medium like air, water, steel, etc. for its propagation. It cannot travel through vacuum, which can be demonstrated by an experiment. Take an electric bell and an airtight glass bell jar. The electric bell is suspended inside the airtight bell jar. The bell jar is connected to a vacuum pump, as shown here. If we press the switch, you will be able to hear the bell. Now start the vacuum pump. When the air in the jar is pumped out gradually, the sound becomes fainter, although the same current is passing through the bell. After some time, when less air is left inside the bell jar, we will hear a very feeble sound. Sound waves are longitudinal waves. Let's perform an activity. Stretch the slinky. If we mark a dot on the slinky, we will observe that the dot on the slinky will move back and forth parallel to the direction of the propagation of the disturbance. The regions where the coils become closer are called compressions, C, and the regions where the coils are farther apart are called rarefactions, R. As we already know, sound propagates in the medium as a series of compressions and rarefactions. Now we can compare the propagation of disturbance in a slinky with the sound propagation in the medium. These waves are called longitudinal waves. In these waves, the individual particles of the medium move in a direction parallel to the direction of propagation of the disturbance. The particles do not move from one place to another, but they simply oscillate back and forth about their position of rest. This is exactly how a sound wave propagates. Hence, sound waves are longitudinal waves. There is also another type of wave called a transverse wave. In a transverse wave, particles do not oscillate along the line of wave propagation, but they oscillate up and down about their mean position as the wave travels. Thus, a transverse wave is the one in which the individual particles of the medium move about their mean positions in a direction perpendicular to the direction of wave propagation. Light is a transverse wave, but for light, oscillations are not of the medium particles or their pressure or density. It is not a mechanical wave. Characteristics of a sound wave we can describe a sound wave by its frequency, amplitude, and speed. A sound wave in graphic form represents how density and pressure change when the sound wave moves in the medium. The density as well as the pressure of the medium at a given time varies with distance above and below the average value of density and pressure. Figure represents the density and pressure variations, respectively, as a sound wave propagates in the medium. Compressions are the regions where particles are crowded together and represented by the upper portion of the curve. The peak represents the region of maximum compression. Thus, compressions are regions where density as well as pressure is high. Rarefactions are the regions of low pressure where particles are spread apart and are represented by the valley, that is the lower portion of the curve. A peak is called a crest. A valley is called the trough of a wave. The distance between two consecutive compressions, C, or two consecutive rarefactions, R, is called the wavelength. The wavelength is usually represented by lambda, Greek letter lambda. Its SI unit is meter, M. Frequency tells us how frequently an event occurs. The times we are beating the drum per unit time is called the frequency of your beating the drum. We know when sound is propagated through a medium, the density of the medium oscillates between a maximum value and a minimum value. The change in density from the maximum value to the minimum value, again to the maximum value, makes one complete oscillation. The number of such oscillations per unit time is the frequency of the sound wave. If we can count the number of compressions or rarefactions that cross us per unit time, we'll get the frequency of the sound wave. It's usually represented by Greek letter nu. Its SI unit is hertz, symbol Hz. The time taken by two consecutive compressions or rarefactions to cross a fixed point is called the time period of the wave. In other words, we can say that the time taken for one complete oscillation in the density of the medium is called the time period of the sound wave. It's represented by the symbol T. Its SI unit is second, S. Frequency and time period are related as follows. 1 by T. A violin and a flute may both be played at the same time in an orchestra. Both sounds travel through the same medium, that is, air, and arrive at our ear at the same time. 
Both sounds travel at the same speed irrespective of the source, but the sounds we receive are different. This is due to the different characteristics associated with the sound. Pitch is one of the characteristics. The process by which the brain interprets the frequency of an emitted sound is called its pitch. The faster the vibration of the source, the higher is the frequency and higher is the pitch. Thus, a high pitch sound corresponds to more number of compressions and rarefactions passing a fixed point per unit time. Objects of different sizes and conditions vibrate at different frequencies to produce sounds of different pitch. The magnitude of the maximum disturbance in the medium on either side of the mean value is called the amplitude of the wave. The loudness or softness of a sound is determined basically by its amplitude. The amplitude of the sound wave depends upon the force with which an object is made to vibrate. Loud sound can travel a large distance as it is associated with higher energy. A sound wave spreads out from its source. As it moves away from the source, its amplitude as well as its loudness decreases. This figure shows the wave shapes of a loud and a soft sound of the same frequency. The quality or timbre of sound is that characteristic which enables us to distinguish one sound from another, having the same pitch and loudness. The sound which is more pleasant is said to be of a rich quality. A sound of single frequency is called a tone. The sound which is produced due to a mixture of several frequencies is called a note and is pleasant to listen to. The speed of sound is defined as the distance which a point on a wave such as a compression or a rarefaction travels per unit time. We know speed v is equal to distance by time. That is equal to lambda by t. Here lambda is the wavelength of the sound wave. It is the distance travelled by a sound wave in one particular time period. It is the distance travelled by the sound wave in one time period t of the wave. Thus, v is equal to lambda v. Since 1 by t or v is equal to lambda v, that is, speed is equal to wavelength into frequency. The speed of sound remains almost the same for all frequencies in a given medium under the same physical conditions. The amount of sound energy passing each second through unit area is called the intensity of sound. We sometimes use the terms loudness and intensity interchangeably, but they are not the same. Loudness is a measure of the response of the ear to the sound. Even when two sounds are of equal intensity, we may hear one as louder than the other simply because our ear detects it better. Speed of sound in different media Sound propagates through a medium at a finite speed. The sound of a thunder is heard a little later than the flash of light is seen. So we can make out that sound travels with a speed which is much less than the speed of light. The speed of sound depends on the properties of the medium through which it travels. The speed of sound in a medium depends on the temperature of the medium. The speed of sound decreases when we go from solid to gaseous state. In any medium, as we increase the temperature, the speed of sound increases. For example, the speed of sound in air is 331 meters per second at 0 degrees Celsius and 344 meters per second at 22 degrees Celsius. The speeds of sound at a particular temperature in various media are listed in the table. Reflection of sound The directions in which the sound is incident and is reflected make equal angles with the normal to the reflecting surface at the point of incidence and the three are in the same plane. An obstacle of large size which may be polished or rough is needed for the reflection of sound waves. Echo. If we shout or clap near a suitable reflecting object, such as a tall building or mountain, we'll hear the same sound again a little later. The sound which we hear is called an echo. The sensation of sound persists in our brain for about 0.1 seconds. To hear a distinct echo, the time interval between the original sound and the reflected one must be at least 0.1 seconds. If we take the speed of sound to be 344 meter per second at a given temperature, say at 22 degrees centigrade in air, 
the sound must go to the obstacle and reach back the ear of the listener on reflection after 0.1 second. Hence, the total distance covered by the sound from the point of generation to the reflecting surface and back should be at least 344 meter per second into 0.1 second. That's equal to 34.4 meters. Thus, for hearing distinct echoes, the minimum distance of the obstacle from the source of sound must be half of this distance, that is 17.2 meters. This distance will change with the temperature of air. Echoes may be heard more than once due to successive or multiple reflections. The rolling of thunder is due to the successive reflections of the sound from a number of reflecting surfaces, such as the clouds and the land. Reverberation A sound created in a big hall will persist by repeated reflection from the walls until it is reduced to a value where it is no longer audible. The repeated reflection that results in this persistence of sound is called reverberation. In an auditorium, or a big hall. Excessive reverberation is highly undesirable. To reduce reverberation, the roof and walls of the auditorium are generally covered with sound absorbent materials like compressed fiberboard, rough plaster or draperies. The seat materials are also selected on the basis of their sound absorbing properties. Uses of multiple reflection of sound. Let's discuss the uses of multiple reflection of sound. Megaphones or loud hailers. Horns, musical instruments such as trumpets and shenais are all designed to send sound in a particular direction without spreading it in all directions. In these instruments, a tube followed by a conical opening reflects sound successively to guide most of the sound waves from the source in the forward direction towards the audience. 2. Stethoscope is a medical instrument used for listening to sounds produced within the body, chiefly in the heart or lungs. In stethoscopes, the sound of the patient's heartbeat reaches the doctor's ears by multiple reflection of sound. 3. Generally, the ceilings of concert halls, conference halls and cinema halls are curved, so that sound after reflection reaches all the corners of the hall. Sometimes, a curved soundboard may be placed behind the stage so that the sound after reflecting from the soundboard spreads evenly across the width of the hall. Range of Hearing The audible range of sound for human beings extends from about 20 Hz to 20,000 Hz. 1 Hz is equal to 1 cycle per second. Children under the age of 5 and some animals such as dogs can hear up to 25 kilohertz. 1 kilohertz is equal to 1000 hertz. As people grow older, their ears become less sensitive to higher frequencies. Sounds of frequencies below 20 hertz are called infrasonic sound or infrasound. Rhinoceros communicate using infrasound of frequency as low as 5 hertz. Whales and elephants produce sound in the infrasound range. It's observed that some animals get disturbed before earthquakes. Earthquakes produce a low-frequency infrasound before the main shock waves begin, which possibly alert the animals. Frequencies higher than 20 kHz are called ultrasonic sound or ultrasound. Ultrasound is produced by dolphins, bats and porpoises. Moths of certain families have very sensitive hearing equipment. These moths can hear the high-frequency squeaks of the bat and know when a bat is flying nearby and are able to escape capture. Rats also play games by producing ultrasound. Let's discuss the applications of ultrasound. Ultrasounds are high-frequency waves. Ultrasounds are able to travel along well-defined paths even in the presence of obstacles. Ultrasounds are used extensively in industries and for medical purposes. Ultrasound is generally used to clean parts located in hard-to-reach places, for example, spiral tube, odd-shaped parts, electronic components, etc. Objects to be cleaned are placed in a cleaning solution and ultrasonic waves are sent into the solution. Due to the high frequency, the particles of dust, grease and dirt get detached and drop out. The objects thus get thoroughly cleaned. Ultrasound can be used to detect cracks and flaws in metal blocks. Metallic components are generally used in construction of big structures like buildings, bridges, machines and also scientific equipment. The cracks or holes inside the metal blocks which are invisible from outside 
reduces the strength of the structure. Ultrasonic waves are allowed to pass through the metal block and detectors and are used to detect the transmitted waves. Ordinary sound of longer wavelengths cannot be used for such a purpose as it will bend around the corners of the defective location and enter the detector. Ultrasonic waves are made to reflect from various parts of the heart and form the image of the heart. This technique is called echocardiography. Ultrasound scanner is an instrument which uses ultrasonic waves for getting images of internal organs of the human body. A doctor may image the patient's organs such as liver, gallbladder, uterus, kidney, etc. It helps the doctor to detect abnormalities such as stones in the gallbladder and kidney or tumors in different organs. In this technique, ultrasonic waves travel through the tissues of the body and get reflected from a region where there is a change of tissue density. These waves are then converted into electrical signals that are used to generate images of the organs. These images are then displayed on a monitor or printed on a film. This technique is called ultrasonography. Ultrasonography is also used for examination of the fetus during pregnancy to detect congenial defects and growth abnormalities. Ultrasound may be employed to break small stones formed in the kidneys into fine grains. These grains later get flushed out with the urine. The acronym SONAR stands for Sound Navigation and Ranging. Sonar is a device that uses ultrasonic waves to measure the distance, direction and speed of underwater objects. It consists of a transmitter and a detector and is installed in a boat or a ship. The transmitter produces and transmits ultrasonic waves. These waves travel through water and after striking the object on the seabed, get reflected back and are sensed by the detector. The detector converts the ultrasonic waves into electrical signals which are appropriately interpreted. The distance of the object that reflected the sound wave can be calculated by knowing the speed of the sound in water and the time interval between transmission and reception of the ultrasound. Let the time interval between transmission and reception of ultrasound signal be T and speed of sound through seawater be V. The total distance 2D traveled by the ultrasound is then 2D is equal to V into T. The above method is called echo ranging. The sonar technique is used to determine the depth of the sea and to locate underwater hills, valleys, submarine icebergs, sunken ship, etc. Bats search out prey and fly in the dark night by emitting and detecting reflections of ultrasonic waves. The high-pitched ultrasonic squeaks of the bat are reflected from the obstacles of prey and return to the bat's ear as shown here. The nature of reflections tell the bat where the obstacle of prey is and what it is like. Porpoises also use ultrasound for navigation and location of food in the dark. Structure of human ear We are able to hear with the help of an extremely sensitive device called the ear. It allows us to convert pressure variations in air with audible frequencies into electric signals that travel to the brain via the auditory nerve. The outer ear is called pinna. It collects the sound from the surroundings. The collected sound passes through the auditory canal. At the end of the auditory canal, there is a thin membrane called the eardrum or tympanic membrane. When a compression of the medium reaches the eardrum, the pressure on the outside of the membrane increases and forces the eardrum inwards. Similarly, the eardrum moves outwards when a rarefaction reaches it. In this way, the eardrum vibrates. The vibrations are amplified several times by three bones, the hammer, anvil and stirrup in the middle ear. The middle ear transmits the amplified pressure variations received from the sound wave to the inner ear. In the inner ear, the pressure variations are turned into electrical signals by the cochlea. These electrical signals are sent to the brain via the auditory nerve and the brain interprets them as sound. Let's summarize the topic. Vibration means a kind of repeated to and fro motion of an object. Sound needs a material medium for its propagation. 
A transverse wave is the one in which the individual particles of the medium move about their mean positions in a direction perpendicular to the direction of wave propagation. Loud sound can travel a larger distance as it is associated with higher energy.